Hello everyone. I thought we'd start this episode with a shot of our lovely red onions. Look how well they're doing. After starting the last episode with the shot of our awful, um, our awful white onions that uh, were in our thick clay soil. Um, we can show you that we do have a couple of beds like this that are doing ever so well. As you can see they've started to bend over um, so they're starting to get ready to be uh, pulled up and that will be nice, they look very nice underneath. So this episode is about um, the next stage. So we've got things ready to go in this bed and we are going to be looking at things you can sow in June. We are the 20th of June now. So let's look at things we can be starting off. Okay, so you are enjoying your harvest. Some of your first harvests are coming. You're getting your first cucumbers. Uh, if you're picking them, um, maybe you're getting a few tomatoes. The harvests are coming. Your work is paying off. You're busy, busy harvesting. You're getting ready to process all the lovely harvests you're going to have. And you might have some stuff like this ready to go in when you know you've got um, some space coming empty for example um, those onions that are going to come out I've got some Romanesco here that I'm going to put in there I've got another tray like this um, so these are ready to go in um, but they can stay in these pots for another couple of weeks or however long those are you know these are waiting for the onions that bed is already covered so it's going to um, protect these from the cabbage whites when they grow up. So that bed is covered. Um, I've got a few more other things. We've got some lettuce. This is all year round that can be pricked out. We've got um, two lots of leeks ready to go in. We've got Musselberg here and what's this one? Hannibal. So we've got two lots of leeks going in. I've got quite a few artichokes. I've sowed artichokes for the first time this year and they all did really well. <laughs> We're going to need to find space for those. We've got some onions there, Kelse, which um, I was told was a really good variety of onion to sow. So and I only get seeds from those. So that's what I've done there. Here at the back, we've got some Inca berries loads of other names for those cape gooseberries ground cherries all sorts of names i've got a couple of those i've put up a bed for those so again we're so busy ready lots of things ready to go in but this is where i'm making my point today these were sown a while ago and they're ready to go in now but what we need to do is get ready for the next lot so we always need to be looking ahead um, these, if you were doing late sowings or successional sowings and you're waiting for them to come up, like the leeks, they seem to take forever, um, and they're finally ready and you're finally getting some space, what we need to be doing now is thinking of planting now for the autumn. Um, so we're going to take a look at what we're going to do for now, what we're going to sow now, but while I'm just here and I'm looking at these empty trays, now is a good time to evaluate what is not coming up. So there's, these were um, on this side, Rose's Nimbus tomatoes, we've got no more of those coming up. None of my edamame have come up. And at the back, that was um, a tray of seeds I sowed from a shop pepper. And I've taken out what has grown from them they were really slow to grow actually they have grown but i'll show you them in a second they were really slow um, so now i'm just going to reuse these trays um, you know make some space in the greenhouse and start again right just quickly these are the shop peppers they look so healthy but i don't think they are going to grow big enough to produce anything this year so this is when i say the greenhouse this is a greenhouse at home it's open you know it's sunny and warm enough here that it doesn't need um it really doesn't need zipping up or anything like that it's literally just shelf space as you can see we've got quite a lot of basil that's doing well that needs potting on 
we're going to be making some pesto with those my purple basil is only just coming up so um, what I will do in the winter I will take these in so they um, survive they're not uh, frost hardy these they don't like the cold so I'll take them indoors but they're fine outdoors at the minute right so let's take a look now at what we can sow right now so um, these are the seeds I've got for now like a lot of people at the beginning of the year in the winter when there's nothing to do I go through all my seeds and I sort out by month which needs sowing and then I tend to stop about May because I run out of new seeds that need to be sown in June everything's either in the March, April, May piles um, so this time of year is a good time to go back through that lot of seeds and see what can be re-sown there's a few things that I always keep on top of the pile like the carrots to um, make sure we successionally sow those but let's see what we've got for sowing in June so all of our lettuces we've got a good selection here little gem rocket mustard catalonia i've not had um much success with catalonia they didn't grow so i don't think i'll sow those again all the year round we love those so that will definitely be one and that's one i just showed you outside um and again a mixed one there so i won't sow all of these but i'll sow a little selection i'll i'll pick some nick likes the little gem that's why we got that and i'll probably sow some mixed leaves as well so what else we've got i would have done this outside but the wind got up and uh, all the seeds are blowing everywhere kale um this is just nero de tosca and then this is a, a general mix one we do have kale um coming on at the allotment and it's doing very well i will keep sowing that because kale is something that we do use a lot of uh, we dehydrate it yeah, dehydrated kale is very good you can salt it and dehydrate it as a snack which is nice um, Chinese kale, spinach, beet leaf and even callaloo can be sown now turnips, got a couple of turnips swede, now that is something I didn't think you could sow this late or didn't assume you could sow this late but there we go up to July and beetroots Bolt hardy. we're harvesting a lot of beetroot at the minute and we are um, as babies and I'm leaving some to grow so it's not something that you might think of sowing if you've just started your harvest and still waiting for it to grow but sow it now you can sow it um, start it off in modules to transplant and carrots now if you look at these carrots the nonce and the purple haze they say so up until june so you might think if if you've just got a couple of packets okay that's when i stop sowing my carrots but these two you can keep on sowing the autumn king and the early nonce autumn king so till august this one the early nonce look at that so from February to October and uh, that's a good long harvest as well so it does vary from variety to variety what you can sow when you can sow it and I think it was either early not or autumn king that we overwintered in the greenhouse the king. oh that was Rose thinks it was autumn king I think it might have been autumn king um, in the greenhouse in troughs last year so this year I will make sure because our troughs will be empty I'll make sure that we have a good number of troughs in the greenhouse over winter now what else have we got kohlrabi spring onion cucumber now just starting to harvest the baby cucumbers the indoor ones that we've got which were actually growing outdoors because they didn't like the heat of our greenhouse um, you can't sow those but the marketeer this is an outdoor variety and you can sow up until June so you might be getting sick of cucumbers you might be thinking oh my goodness we've got loads what are we going to do with them 
I'm intending to pickle. I'm picking um, some as baby cucumbers and I will pickle them to last us all year round and the rest we will just have, you know, as normal cucumbers, fresh. Now moving down, some peas. I still need to put those in Rose's latest bed. We got these yesterday. Um, they look almost black, don't they? Purple teepee, dwarf French beans. We do like a good French bean. Um, would be ideal to keep um, some in the freezer for all year round. So trying to grow lots of French beans. And finally, this is uh, quite funny, these are uh, sweet corns. Now, when I was looking at the different varieties of sweet corn, all of them, bar this kid's one, were so um, up until May, but these ones were, uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, so outside May to June, or inside April to June. So we will sow those. We've got a good bed, if you've seen it on our other videos of sweet corn, but you can never have too much. There's only 20 seeds in there, so we shall sow those and find a spot for them. Now, let's uh, let's choose what we're going to sow and take them outside and get them in some compost. Right, I've sorted out the seeds. I've um, gone through and selected the ones I want to grow right now. I've chosen um, all year round for Rose, mixed lettuce for me and little gem for Nick. Obviously, we all have all of them, but you know there are individual favourites and some beet chart now chard uh, the rainbow chard again now i've this is a uh 40 module seed tray and i'm going to do two rows of each that's 10 of each on those that's those i've got um this for the dwarf french beans i'm going to put two i think in each um hot in each module there so i've got 12 i might sow some more again in a little while you can sow those up until july those ones and harvest up until october ish these pots i've got ready for the mr funny sweet corn these um the peas the spring onions and the um, rainbow beetroot that rose wanted to grow quite funny she doesn't like beetroot but she might try some of the other colors just to try them she's a game girl likes to try things so these ones will be sown direct so they need to go to the allotment and for my carrots i've decided to sow for the moment actually we sowed the nonce in rose's new palette collar bed the other day so I'm going to sow these ones, the purple haze. Both of these, I believe, are up until June, as I just said indoors. Yeah, up until June. So I'm going to sow those now because the other two, the early nonce and the autumn king, we can grow later on. So I'm going to make, make the most of the varieties that we have. It's uh, quite windy here, so I'm just trying to hold everything down. And um, I've got here, this is where I'm going to sow spinach, two rows of that. Kale, um, the, the mixed kale and the Nero de Tosca, two each of those, and a Chinese kale. So there will be ten of each that I'm going to sow, so two rows um, on those. We want lots of kale. It dehydrates lovely. I think I said that earlier. I'm getting old, repeating myself. So, I won't sow, show <laughs> you sowing. I won't show you me sowing all of these. I could get your teeth in, Karen. So these only need to go down very 
liked the lettuce. Hope they don't blow away. Just going to put a couple in each module. Um, now, as I showed you earlier, I sewed these in a little tray. Uh, we do use them sometimes as a cut and come again on those. Just take them off as baby leaves. Rose just picks them and eats them, which is good. Oops. You know, it's all going inside. Right. Now, I will come back when I have filled these and then I'm just going to put a light sprinkling over the top okay okay seeds are sown and um, I'm just going to lightly sprinkle over the top tiny seeds With the rainbow chard, they're um, bigger seeds, so I've uh, already buried those. I had to dib a little bit. Right, so that is all those ready for a watering. I've got my packets here so that I can put them on our um, spreadsheet indoors. I was going to pop them under that stone. And now we shall move on to our purple teepee dwarf French beans. Not grown this variety before. Looks interesting. And if you've been watching um, our videos with Rosie's new raised beds that we've made out of pallet collars. Um, I put a, we call it the obelisk, it's like a black framed um, wire metal thing for the peas to grow up, which I'm going to plant some more of those round. I just planted a couple because I had some left over. Um, and I put some leftover French beans, some dwarf French beans in the front and these when they come up can go around the edge I like to make sure we plant what Rose likes to eat in her allotment but we are a bit um, you know, obviously as a family we share both plots Her allotment has tended to be more fruit and ours more veg, but uh, she's moving over. Right, that's those. I've already got my label in, ready for a water. Now let's move on to the next lot. And here I have just sown our Matador spinach, Nero de Tosca kale, superfood kale, the mixed one, and Chinese kale. everything down. I, uh, I hope you can hear me all right. I've got the fluffy cat on, the dead cat as some people call it, on my mic which is supposed to stop a lot of the wind noise. So Now I'm going to sow the purple haze. They're a really interesting carrot. They're what we had the other day with our um, Buddha bowl, if you saw that video. They lose their colour if you cook them to death, but if you just cook them, you know, lightly, al dente, then uh, they retain their colour, which is good because a lot of 
the interesting um, a lot of the interesting colour plants do lose their colour once you've cooked them now if you've watched our videos you'll know I like doing my carrots in troughs and that's what I've done here two lines and actually you can see there I've got some more there let's come back to that I've got a few seeds left so what I will do is I will sow those in the gaps down the allotment where we've been harvesting the carrots I like troughs because the carrots grow lovely and straight um, and you can move them around easy and um, have them up high so they avoid the carrot fly which I like no bugs no problems with bugs with these I'll just get a bit of compost to sprinkle over the top And that is those done. I'll find a marker for those. What's this one? I've got kale written on it, so I shall just rub that off. And if I can find the pen, white purple haze on there. I don't normally bother to mark carrots because you know we eat so many of them a carrot's a carrot there we go purple haze um, I will leave this container at home and I will take uh, I'll just have the containers that we've got down the allotment at the allotment and the last thing at home we're going to do is our Mr Funny sweet corn seeds now these are actually quite big seeds for sweet corn not um, seen them this big before so it will be interesting to see what the plants come out like I'm just going to quickly pop these in I did have a quick count out because Rose very kindly filled up 20 pots for me and they're actually 22 seeds so in the taller ones here I've put two holes oh no there is just a 20 I must have miscounted I was surprised they'd given extra with the uh, size of the seeds that they are There we go. So quite a lot of sewing done at home. I like to have these at home. I find them easier to look after. You know all the seeds I've sown today. Easier to look after while they're babies. And we have the um, hose at home, which is also convenient. It means we, you know, I don't have to worry about watering. As you know, we've got water shortage at the allotment. So. Um, I can look after these and give them the best start here and uh, now we're going to head off to the allotment see you down there so this is our what was our blackberry area I've left some blackberries to grow over there and Nick has dug them up so we've put our cardboard and I made a little raised bed out of some pallets and I've got three inkerberry plants that I'm going to put in there. They do get quite big, so 
that's why I've spaced them out like that. So let's stick those in. Okay, and now we are sowing some peas. This is Rose's middle bed. Peas here. So I'm just going to pop them in. That one there doesn't look too healthy. It's a bit dry. We've not been down for a couple of days, but we have had some rain. I'm just poking them in. Okay, I shall go and do the other side. Right, that's all the peas in. As you can see, now that obelisk in the middle looks properly in the middle. Now we've got all the five beds up. And so around the rest of this bed, we've got the French beans here. And then I shall put the um, purple teepee French beans just around the edge there. Another thing to think about doing in June is getting rid of your runners from your strawberry plants. Um, if you don't want any new plants, then you want to be taking the runners off. And I'll show you what they're like. This is one here. What will happen is this will find its way to some soil and then you'll have little roots come out here. So we just want to chop it off. If you're looking to extend your strawberry patch, then by all means, let these runners root and uh, next year you'll have some new plants. There we go. Pop them down there with the others I've taken off. But what you will do is you will be making a compromise for this first year on um, strawberries. And there's one that's going to come there, so I'll take that off. So last year, I let the runners run and root, and all of this bed is made from runners from last year. So there's not a huge fruit crop coming off of these. But look at this one. Oh, well done, Rose. Um, yeah, there's not a huge crop coming off these because it is their first year as grown-up plants. But we want to make sure that they are not trying to multiply, let them uh, establish their roots and, and put out fruit. Now this is Rose's strawberry bed. These are strawberries we've bought from home. And I've just found this runner. And as you can see, it started to root. So I'm just going to pop this in the bed Make a little hole, pop it in. Now I'm going to leave the runner on it. Normally it would still be taking um, nutrients from the parent plant. Um, so I'm leaving the runner on so that any goodness that's in the runner can go down into the plant. This may not work, but the alternative, there's another runner coming off of it. I'll take that off. The alternative was I was going to just pop it on the compost heap. So here it'll have a chance. If it um, doesn't live, then that's fair enough as well. Okay, these are the carrots we've got at the allotment at the moment. We've picked most of this back row here. And so we've got a gap. So I'm going to put our purple haze in there. As I said, we grew the um, nonce in Rosie's raised bed the other day. So I'm just making the most of the space and sprinkled too many in there. Most of the space and of the time because these are going up till June. So there we go. I'll just cover these up and that's those done and now moving on to beetroot I have prepared this whole bed for a whole bed of beetroot and um, yes we'll have a, a whole harvest all at once but 
we can process it I want to use this for um, the dark ones I'm going to powder and have as a colouring for food natural colouring and the rest do you know what Rose doesn't like beetroot but one of her favourite drinks from the supermarket which we have as a treat you know birthdays and things is a fruit and vegetable um, smoothie which has beetroot in it so if I can get beetroot into her this way I will let's get sewing and watering them in a whole bed of yummy beetroot okay we have one more final job for the day and that is to tie some of our um, sunflowers you can see we've got a wonky one there just tie some of them to the sticks and then we are going home so I hope uh, I hope this video has given you lots to do for June. Let us know what you're selling. See you soon. Bye bye.